All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, work continues on the pool. Today we're gonna talk about some of the deck drains we're gonna install within our Travertine pool deck. One with a product from NDS. This is a somewhat premium product as far as price goes. I'll tell you what we've got here and what everything kind of costs. The reason I chose this product, most of the channel drains that I could find were, you know, some that are real skinny and sit, you know, recessed with the deck, which is nice, which is what these will end up sitting like. They were really small, looked like they'd clog up. I wanted something a little bigger, but not too big. So what we've gone with here is an NDS channel drain product, and they refer to this product as their mini. They have a few other sizes. I think one's called uh, a speedy channel. They maybe have another one. I ordered this product through Menards and had it delivered to the store and picked it up. Looked like from the NDS website, you could order directly from them. The prices were a little bit cheaper through Menards and they're running their 11% rebate right now. So I got a little bit more off the top. So that was good. Found that Menards and a few other box stores do carry some NDS products in stock, but they're not the mini. So they're not this size. A mini is a three inch channel. So the width of this channel is just right at three inches. The height of it is actually just a little bit over three inches. So I thought this would be a nice profile that would allow me a lot of volume for water movement, but just not be too big compared to the Speedy and, and maybe one of their other profiles, which are four or five inches wide. And that was just a little bit more than I was looking to, to install around the pool. Those bigger ones are, are more, you know, made for an application in a driveway. So where your driveway is meeting your garage door, you might put a nice bigger channel drain, you know, across that area there. So those products would be well suited for that. So what we've got here, uh, I'm gonna tell you what each product is and the price of it. Cause I'm telling you this stuff is expensive, but I think it's gonna do the job and I think it's gonna look really well. So we're going with a premium travertine pool deck. So I'm not gonna cheap out and put a, a drain in that we're ultimately not gonna be happy with. So the main part of the system is the channel itself. They come in six foot sections, right at $45 a piece. Not cheap by any means. 45 bucks, you've got a six foot section of the NDS mini channel drain, which again is a three inch channel. So 45 bucks for the main channel, six foot sections. The great covers, this is really one of the primary reasons I chose to go with NDS and this product specifically. They offer a number of different grate cover options from just your basic slotted grate covers to ones like this that are a little bit more decorative. This is called their botanical design and the color of it they call sand. It's kind of a tan color that I think will match real nice with our travertine stone that we're putting around the pool. These actually come in three foot sections. So if you have one six foot section to drain, you would need two of these drain covers or the grate covers to span that width and they are 20 bucks a piece. So you got 45 bucks for the channel, 20 bucks for the drain cover, actually 40 bucks for the drain cover by the time you buy two of them. So you can see how the cost starts to add up pretty quick. The other components that I've got here, this is a coupler. So when you're joining two sections of drain channel together, this is glued in place, I believe just like, you know, using a PVC cement. We'll get into the actual installation of this later in the video. But this is a coupler that allows you to join two sections of channel together. These are $6.30 a piece. So not as bad compared to the rest of the system. The end cap we're gonna use, so this is actually where we'll discharge. They have a couple different options for this. They have one that just shoots out, you know, the back. This is a two inch. I believe I can just put a two inch PVC pipe in here. They also have ones that go straight down. So depending on, you know, how you need to, to manage your water and get it away from the channel, they've got a couple of options for you there. I've elected for the one that just comes straight out the back and I've got a plan on what we're gonna do there. This particular end outlet was $7.20. I'm rounding a little bit, it was $7.19. So I got a couple of those guys. The other part of the system that I went ahead and purchased is an elbow. They make 90 degree elbows and they make 45 degree elbows and I think they maybe have some T's also. I bought two 45 degree elbows. I couldn't find the botanical grate cover to come you know, installed with the 45 degree angle piece. So my plan is I'm just gonna cut um, some drain cover and make a piece that'll fit into this 45 because you can see it comes standard with just their slotted drain cover. And what I didn't realize also until I got this piece in, well I guess first the cost of this piece, it was 20 bucks. So you're looking at 20 bucks for, for the 45 degree angle pieces. And I maybe misspoke earlier. I think the great covers, they're actually 17 bucks a piece, not 20. This is the $20 piece. The great covers are 17 bucks. So let me talk to you a little bit more about the uh, 45 degree angle piece here. I assumed it was a one piece construction, you know, molded construction, but really what they've done is just cut some of their channel and glued them together to make the 45 degree angle. So I don't know if you can see 
you know, here the seam there, it's just glued together. I'm not sure, it must be just a PVC cement, I'm assuming. So all around, you can just see they, they put two pieces together to make the angle, glued it together. They took some of their standard uh, channel grate, cut it to meet, and installed it with screws here. If I'd have known this before I ordered it, I may have opted to just try to make my own because I'm pretty sure I can just replicate this process here and it would allow me to actually do a custom angle instead of being restricted to just a 45 or a 90 degree angle that they offer. So we're gonna go ahead and use these since we purchased them. I'm not gonna bother with trying to return them. Uh, I think they will install nicely. Now a couple other things on this grate. You can see as they come in with the channel grate covers installed, I can see the gray edge of the channel. I don't like that and I don't want that because the main channels that I got, you can see they actually have a lip. If I slide this channel forward, it sits in here and you can see it completely covers the gray sidewalls of the channel. So I'm gonna you know, replace these two slotted grates with some of my botanical grate covers. So I'll be able to achieve my consistent you know, finished look and have everything concealed and matching pretty well. These great covers, they come with screw holes in them. You can see just the little, I guess, stainless screws they have. Uh, you can buy packs of those from NDS or you, know, you can just go to the hardware section of your box store, wherever you shop at and find some screws. I'm probably not gonna screw these in at all. Just the friction fit here, I mean, it's fairly snug. You can see as it is, I can pick the channel up with the grate installed and the grate doesn't come out. And I think by not having the screws, it'll just make it easier if I ever have a blockage or I ever just wanna clean it out. I can just pull them out really easily and go ahead and get the whole channel cleaned out. So maybe I'll change my mind down the road, but my initial plan is I'm not gonna screw these in. Now the one complaint I have about this product since I've got it in, I told you the main reason I was willing to pay the premium is really for the aesthetics. I like the design, I like the look, uh, and it is a, a quality product. But on every single one of the grate covers, they have their NDS company logo embossed or you know molded into every grate cover. Fine for them, but the look that I'm trying to achieve here is not to advertise the manufacturer of products around my pool area. I just want a nice, clean, seamless look. So every three feet, I'm gonna have you know, their molded NDS logo on all my channel drains. So I kind of don't like that. And I didn't realize that at all from looking at the photos on their website. I'm sure you can see it on there. I didn't pay attention enough to realize that. If that's a concern for you, I do want to make sure you're aware of it though as you're watching this video, because I would have preferred not to have that on there, but I would have had to go on with another product option. So these are the products we've got. What we're going to do today is try to get these set ahead of our paver installation. Now, if you read the installation instructions from NDS, Really all I can find is instructions that have you setting your channels and then pouring concrete on both sides of the channel. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I don't know if NDS would advise the method I'm gonna try to use, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get my channels set on my gravel base. So I've got compacted three quarter minus limestone gravel all around the pool right now. We're gonna get the channels set there. We're gonna get them leveled, you know, the way we want them positioned just right. And then I'm hopefully gonna be able to secure them enough to where I can bring gravel up on both sides of it and keep them in place and keep them going straight and keep them right where I want them. And then we'll just finish the pavers right up to the edge of the channel. So it's gonna go against their installation instructions, but I'm not gonna take the time and pour concrete on both sides of this because I think I can achieve a pretty sound installation with what we're gonna do later in the video here. So that's it for here in the shop. Uh, we're gonna get these products out in the backyard near the pool. We're gonna take quite a bit of time to set up and measure. I've got a, a rotary laser we may get out. We're probably gonna run some string lines to figure out the exact height and the exact uh, pitch we want these at. We'll, uh, we'll cut here, head to the backyard, and uh, see if we can get these in. In the backyard here, we've got the channels ready. I'll show you where we're gonna put them. So we've been working on a backyard renovation at the pool, renovation part done. Now we're prepping for the installation of our travertine pavers around the pool. So this channel drain is gonna follow, if you can see that string line, it'll run the length of the house here. And then I'm actually gonna put a couple of those 45s and come out and then go over that way with it just a little bit. So been working to get this level and set with the proper grade pitch, you know, all that. So my water flows and it'll actually be nice having these installed because then I can use the coping on the pool and this channel to screed my sand before I lay the pavers in here. So it'll actually work out kind of nice because I'll be able to set my deck height between those two points. So uh, that'll work out pretty good. And what I'm doing first, 
is just going through a handful of them and putting these couplers on some. So then when I go down the line and connect the pieces together, hopefully it'll go a little bit faster. But you can see here, you just use PVC glue. I'm using primer and a glue to put the couplers on. It doesn't set up quite as quickly as a Schedule 40 PVC. Hopefully I'm getting a good strong bond. So these two pieces I've already joined together. But I'll just kind of show you quickly on one piece. So we've got the couplers, we've got our PVC primer, our PVC cement. It'd probably be better if you had a smaller dauber to apply the PVC cement to really get inside this channel well. The one I have is, is kind of a bigger one, but I'm just kind of making it work. So nothing really too technical about this part. We'll uh, throw some primer kind of into the coupler, trying to get that channel coated pretty good. And then I'm just going around the outside with the primer on the actual uh, the channel here. So I don't want that purple primer staining up on the inside. I don't know if you'd be able to catch that purple color through the holes in the grate, but just in case, I'm putting the primer just on the outside. Kind of loading up my dauber here with heavy duty PVC cement, and I'm just really coating inside this the channel on this coupler as much as I can. Like I said, a smaller dauber would probably let you get in there a little easier. And then I'm going around the channel too. The outside, the glue I actually am going in on the inside. This shouldn't discolor really. So then you just press it on, hold it on there for a few seconds, let it start to set up, and then you should be good to go. So my plan here is to go through and put couplers on one side of a bunch of these guys. I'll get them laid out in a line, then start connecting them to one another. I don't know what our run is there, about 45 or 50 feet. So pretty good run of it. And then we'll come back once I kind of get all these laid out and I'll show you my plan to stabilize and hold these channels in place since I'm not pouring cement on either side of it. So I think I'm gonna use some edge restraints and some, some uh, ground stakes to secure these things in place. Then we'll come back through, add our additional crushed limestone, compact it in, hopefully without moving these channels too much. So I'll run these out, get them glued in, come back and show you how I'm gonna secure them in place and then how we ultimately get them, get them installed completely. jumped forward a little bit on you here but I thought I'd go ahead and show you exactly how I got this the channel drain installed so uh, I was planning on filming it as I went but it was just easier I think to get it in and now I'll explain my approach to it I'm not saying it's the right approach or the best approach but it was my approach so we got all the channels glued together went pretty good I'd say um, I definitely let them set up before you move them around I think I mentioned earlier, it seems like they don't set as quick as just a Schedule 40 PVC pipe would be, or, or would rather, even though they are made from PVC and we were using a heavy duty PVC cement. So take that into account. Basically what we did, spent a bit of time just getting the grades set right here. So they're beside the pool, sitting fairly level, but pitched away from the pool coping. So we're a little over a half an inch lower than the pool coping and the distance from the pool coping to these channel drain drains ranges because the curvature of the pool ranges from a couple feet to i don't know maybe four feet or a little bit over at the at the absolute most and where the curve goes out there so basically what what i did i'm gonna put six inch by 12 inch travertine stones in a soldier course next to the house so it was just gonna be a straight line of those on the left side of the channel drains. So I just measured out and figured out a parallel line to the house foundation where I wanted those to go. And I just pulled a line from a stake here and then to a stake down on the far end. So I went ahead and just pulled a line uh, 12 and a half inches out. So I'd have a little bit of flexibility because the foundation kind of, you know, is not completely parallel. And then I was gonna use this line to set my parallel, you know, straight set for the channel drains. So that line was a really big help in getting these set. I'd say if you're gonna do it, I had a rotary laser and was checking a grade and things like that, but just pulling a line I think is probably the way to go to make sure you're keeping these channel drains straight. And I'm gonna keep this line pulled as I continue to fill in gravel and build up you know, my base of limestone further up the channel drains till they're completely secured in place. 
but use the line to make sure we were running them straight. And then this is an edging product for pavers. And actually I'm gonna use this type of edging on the outside of my travertine pavers around the pool. So I had some rolls of this sitting here already and I, th I was trying to think of the best way to keep these channel drains secured as we add and compact gravel you know, on both sides of the channel drains and come up to the right grade before we set our pavers. So I thought it was a good idea and you'll see on the bottom of these, channels, these channel drains there's a little lip here and NDS makes a specific plastic stake that you can use to help secure these in. But in, in lieu of using those, I chose to use the edge restraints here. So I ran those the length of the channel drains and just had them on the lip. And every so often I would stake that edge restraint in. So I did that on both sides of the channel drain and it seemed to hold it in, in place pretty well. You can see on the back side of it, I already started to bring in some additional aggregate and compact it in. And I really didn't get any movement from the channel drain. So as I do that on both sides, I think we'll be able to keep it in place pretty well. And again, I'm gonna keep this line pulled the entire time. That way I can make sure that the channel drain continues to run straight. If it starts to shift one way or the other off my line, I can make a small correction there as we go. But all in all, I think it's gonna work out pretty good for us. At the other end is where we're gonna discharge the water. So let's head down there and we'll show you exactly how we got that part set up. If you remember when we went over the parts we were gonna use here, I'm using an end outlet. They also have an outlet that points straight down. Maybe they have something else, but those are the two that I know about. So I already had my downspout here for the house coming down and I ran just four inch PVC out under my fence to discharge the water from that. And what I did when I installed uh, this drain, put a T in here anticipating that I would probably tap into it for this channel drain or, or something at some point. So it worked out pretty good. I can move some of the rocks out of the way here. You can see I just 90'd out of the end of the channel drain. So this two inch slips, you know, over the discharge piece that I had there. 90 down, run a straight shot down, 90 back into a coupler that goes from my two inch, steps it up to four inch, connects right into my four inch T, and then just follows the discharge out underneath the fence. So. This worked out pretty well. I think the drain's gonna work out pretty well for us. I think the edge restraints and the method I've used to secure it in place should work pretty well, especially as the gravel, the limestone keeps coming up and we compact it in. So it's gonna come up really just a little bit above this edge restraint and then I'll have a layer of sand and then actually the travertine stone will basically meet flush, if not maybe an eighth inch or 16th inch above the grate cover. Hey guys, a quick check in on the finished product here. Um, we got most of the travertine in. Some of it I'm gonna have to reset because the heights varied a little bit. I started laying in this area, I hadn't laid any before, so. Uh, but I did just wanna show you how it lined up and how that channel drain actually turned out with it. So we'll step back and take a good look, kind of along this full run. Kind of falling in pretty good, pretty happy with it overall. Uh, as I pan over this way, you can kind of see, establish the base on the gravel and actually used paver edge restraints to lock it in place. So we can see some of those here and staked it in, you know, every every so often, just to keep it from moving around, um, keep it in position for us. Then came back through and built up the rest of the gravel base. Came in, screeded our sand over it, and then just laid, you know, dry set the travertine tiles up against it. So as we walk down along the length of the channel drain, you can start to get a pretty good, a pretty good look here. How it's kind of fallen into place. So really the final step here, I'm gonna use polymeric, you know, locking sand on these travertine pavers. And I'm hoping that I establish enough of a buildup of that between the edge of the tiles and the drain cover itself so the water doesn't run in between the two and actually will kind of run over into the channel drain. You know, obviously if there's a lot of water quantity coming down, heavy rain, it's just gonna wash right in there. But if it's just a little bit of water, I think there's a chance that it could just drop in between. So I'll keep an eye on it and kind of see how it performs over time. Good thing about dry setting your paper tiles like this, I can always adjust them. So actually like right here, I'm gonna come back through and reset these before I lock them into place with that polymeric sand. Cause you can see it's a little lower than the height I would like there. Uh, but as we come on down, the line of it all in all it's looking pretty good and here's where we're discharging from on the end connecting into a buried downspout that i've got there so you can see we've just laid right up to it we'll go ahead and finish this area out but just wanted to show you guys kind of how it turned out 
Uh, this method of installation for the channel drain worked pretty well for me. If you're thinking about a similar project, hopefully this helps you. It gives you a little bit of inspiration. If you got any questions, let me know. I'll try to get back to you. If you want to see anything in addition to what I've already shown you on the installation or the product itself, let me know and we'll do a quick follow-up and get you the information. All right, guys. Appreciate it.